Welcome. <laughs> episode one. 33. 33. <laughs> of the Nova podcast. People are going to be like, oh, this is choppy. So, yeah. they're, they're, anyway. I mean, their internet must be McDonald's Wi Fi. <laughs> anyway, let's go. So I already doing that before. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that's, yeah. We just do it twice. Let's just do it twice. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's cool. I'm pretty sure I paid you to have that paid at one point. Yeah, so um, I use the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> ah, damn it. I swore in the first 30 seconds. Oh, no, no. We're, oh. we're more than 30 seconds. Dude. I think that's the rule. Oh, on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. So we got not that much news, but yeah. Uh, so mittens rewards are going to be shipped out the next few weeks. We just got the rest of the stuff. Well, I just got the rest of the stuff. I didn't get nothing. I'm over <laughs> here just twiddling my thing, fingers over here. Did you didn't even take your own copy of ink, did you? I noticed that after. Um, I just realized that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was wow. kind of upset too because I actually wanted to show somebody, and then I was like. I didn't even take it. Well, so I can send <laughs> I can send mittens too, and I'll send that too, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, yeah, since I'm not coming apparently in October, since they don't yeah. want our money. Listen, listen, folks. If you run a comic convention and you have an email address associated with that comic convention, well, you should it's look a contact at contact form. But contact yeah. form. I don't care. That's and I message them on Facebook. Yeah. So. If you have a lot of ways to message you. And you don't have an easy way to read those things. You should fix that because some people want to give you their money and you don't want it. Exactly. Yeah. Fix that. That's like those people that you go there and you're like, "Oh, I got cash." They're like, "Oh, we only take cards." It's like, but no, no, like I have cash right here. Like it's better than card. This is accepted everywhere except for here, apparently. <laughs> that card, if it's if it's a uh, Discover or you know some other. I think it's only Discover is like the only one that sometimes isn't taken some places. Yeah. It's probably I'm gonna like, you're going to sit there and I'm going to tell you everything I, I accept except Discover. Yeah. Visa, um, MasterCard, <laughs> Amex. <laughs> uh, I even accept, I even accept, uh, accept uh, food stamps, but I don't take Discover when I like yes. them. When I'm one of them folks. <laughs> Speaking of conventions, um, we are doing our virtual Comic Con again, and uh, this will be our fourth really... annual. Yeah. Right? No yeah. third annual. Mm, wait. 20... No, no, we did it on twenty twenty. So yeah, this is our fourth annual. Yeah. That's dope that we like our our, our first one was on twenty twenty. Yeah. Well, <laughs> nothing else going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, besides the world on fire. Uh, yeah, they were busy. <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's weird. Something. That means that our that means our tenth year is on a is in twenty nine, not on thirty. Oh uh, yeah, that's that would be. That's, that's weird though, because you start. You know what I mean? We should we should have yeah. had to be number zero in twenty twenty. This would be our we'll third annual. Like oh, it's, it's our fourth our fourth year third annual. It's like oh, did you guys have a break? It's like no, we just don't count the first one. That was, <laughs> that was, that was number zero. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Last year we yeah so it's gonna be November twenty fourth to twenty sixth. Um, still got to figure out the times, but I already know some of the times for things like for our stuff, I, which I completely forgot right now. But it's in Canva, <laughs> um, and it's on posts on our social media. Basically, if you eat a lot of food on Thanksgiving Day and realize you've got nothing to do that weekend but rest it off, right? Take it on the chin like a champion. Then you should come hang out with us for eight hours a day for three straight days. I think it was eight hours, right? Is it twelve hours? How long do we do that? They were long. Mm, no, we, we usually ended at like eight or something like that. Now, but, but we started at ten, didn't we? So maybe it's ten hours long. No, we we start well ten your time. It's usually like eleven or twelve. Oh. Uh, I'm probably gonna start at noon because. <laughs> All right, um, so they're eight hours long, three days in a row. It's awesome. It's epic. This year, I'm going to spam a bunch of people and be like, "Come, come join our convention. It's going to be really epic and cool." <clears throat> Last year, I tried to. Do, 
have us do a bunch of stuff. We didn't have enough time to do that. Maybe this year, instead of trying to do all those different things, which I know I wouldn't be able to do anyway, <laughs> like uh, fake commercials and stuff from our universe, we'll do. Um, oh, maybe some uh, some AI generated stuff. Oh shit, people are mad. Oh no. <sighs> uh, maybe uh, QR codes and people can actually sell their stuff this mess. time around. Um, because I I've been wanting to do that from the beginning and I just. Never figured out a way to do that. We were trying to do multiple different mm. streams on different platforms last year. I'm not using Restream. <laughs> so that was that was more of a headache than it should have been. Yeah. Um, so not knocking it completely, but you know, I use StreamYard for a reason. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah. we should reach out to StreamYard and be like, "Hey, would you guys sponsor us to do this?" Yeah, we use your thing a lot, so. <laughs> Yeah, so like we only use it for this, but you know, if we if we need it for one day for three, you know, across multiple platforms. Um, yeah, you gotta pay for that at some point to go today. Do you said no at some point, like soon? I have to pay for like the well, not soon, like in November. Um, <clears throat> and our final episode of this podcast will be during that Comic Con. And what he means is that this particular format of podcast will no longer be going on. We will still yeah. be talking, but we might not talk like this. Yeah, we might talk like be, this. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> probably be more fun because we've got some ideas. No, no, yeah, no spoilers. Yeah. No spoilers. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, well, we're gonna do some like tweaking. One person. Yeah, and I, and then we killed him. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So all that's going on. Um, oh, actually, also, if anybody uh, does watch this current format, give me one good reason to keep doing it. Do it, and then we're not yeah. going to listen to that advice, and we're going to do what we want to do. And if you want to be a part of that, that's cool too. But if not. Yeah, because this podcast has turned into, um, I, I have a bunch of other friends that have done podcasts like this, and then it just turns into the same thing. Like, it's just routine over and over and over again of the same thing, and I, I just got sick of it, so. Yeah, so we're going to make it more entertaining. We're going to make it more fun. And, I did, uh, like, breakfast talk, but it's not going to be like that, so I'm going to try yeah. to talk about that. Yeah. Breakfast talk! <laughs> No, or the French bulletin, sad. which I paid <laughs> to have a logo made, and then we only used it for um, a year, if that. Probably like 20 episodes, something like that. Yeah, and then I was like, ah. Oh. Do we got to do eventually? Oh, one second. Yeah, Dave's calling. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. All right, thank Is you. It, all right, later. Uh, could you hear that? I forgot if I hit mute. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, yeah. So, so for everybody, if you wonder where I'm going, I got to bring my brother to urgent care because uh, he messed up his ankle. He's like, "Hey, I know you're about to hop on a podcast. Let me go for a run and cut my ankle." <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, I I don't know when I'll be back because obviously he's busted up. Uh, mm -hmm. But maybe I'll try to hop on like my phone or something when I get there. Cool. All okay. Right. So look at that, everybody. Second, second or third to last podcast. I got to bounce because my bro's got to mess up his leg or ankle. All right. Cool. All right, you know. Cool. So we got our guest, Brandon, from Dismay Comics. Uh, again, this is episode 133 of the Serial Number Podcast. <laughs> cool. So, what's going on with you? Uh, nothing much. Uh, if people are viewing this, I'm not that much of a crazy person. <laughs> a little bit if I'm willing to dress up like this. But, uh, but yeah, I'm Brandon Ingram. And uh, where did you get like the name Dismay Comics from? Dismay Comics kind of started from <clears throat> my first comic series I was working on was Dismay Avenue. It's like a horror anthology. And 
it took a few hours in a day to come up with the name for that horror anthology. And then I basically pulled a DC and just was like, okay, like I need a publishing name. My first comics, Disney Avenue, I'll just do Disney comics. And that's pretty much how the Disney comics came about. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, some people call our flagship title, the Seer Chronicles, the Seer Nova Chronicles, because it's so close to our name. That has uh, nothing to do with it. It's just there's a character called the Seer. <laughs> that, I don't care. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> so not as cool as yours. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Uh, are you, like, building a dark universe with, like, this, this May Avenue and the Gallows May and, and Tales from Town City, which is on Kickstarter right now? uh so disney avenue is like separate of itself disney avenue is pretty much like my serious psychological horror stuff as well as its other types of horror and then gallows man and tells from town city is like my fun funny but like very dark humor type stuff so like with that stuff you have a fun funny time and then disney avenue you're like oh crap this guy something's off with his head clearly (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's actually kind of like so we have a horror anthology called chronicles of horror there's two of them two issues of that and then uh, mm-hmm. i wrote two of the stories in the second one um one is really messed up and the other one is kind of like funnier because it's like chucky but as a turtle uh that's funny. we were at a con- yeah, we were at a convention like two weeks ago uh something like that and um that's how I like said it to some people and the guy that like runs the convention wanted a copy because of just nice. how I said it. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's cool. What's, what's the name of the story? Uh, Chronicles of horror. Uh, my friend Matt like came up with the title because he wanted to have us publish the first one. So, um, just got Chronicles and a bunch of different names. <laughs> nice. And, uh, so, uh, the main character is a grave digger and his name is Mr. Chronicle because that's, we couldn't think of any other name. <laughs> um, and the first one is four stories. And at first they don't look like they all connect, but um, we're going to put the third one out, which is not called Chronicles of Horror. It's called something else. And that was going to come out this year and then money issues and everything else. So it's probably going to be like another year or two and then that's going to come out and it's going to like come full circle with everything from issue one all the way to the last one so yeah and all we have to do is move one story and it connects perfectly nice yeah it's really weird (laughs) um yeah was that a was that like a retroactive thing of like after y'all had done the stories or like let's tie this together or did y'all think before tying it together Mm -hmm. or uh so the first one was just random stories and then the second one i had like way more like project management control over and uh matt wasn't that involved he just wanted to write his story or two stories i think it was two and um i was like cool so now i'm taking this over (laughs) so the second story is the grave digger is it continues from the first one he's going inside his little cabin thing and uh he starts watching a show that's kind of like creep show and each story is like just its own thing but it's actually episodes of the show that is like different episodes or segments of the show that he's watching called Uh, stay tuned not based off the movie stay tuned that's just what it's called (laughs) (laughs) and uh then at the end of spoilers at the end of the issue there's one of the characters actually like takes his puts his hand out of the tv and grabs him and pulls him in to the tv and then it ends with like blood trickling down the tv so you think he's dead but he's not dead (laughs) okay the third issue is he's like going to be part of the show but it's a show within the show it's really weird it's like truman show meets friday the 13th so nice nice that's that's also a good way to to pitch it like when you're at a con yep. like just literally saying that truman show meets friday 13th let's yeah go. i said that to a couple people that <clears throat> were like writers for the third issue because we all we have it all written it just has to get like art and i have to pay the writers 
And I'm like, why? Well, I don't have money to pay you guys yet. So let's just hold off. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, oh, okay. And then how I got them was like, literally, it's Truman Show mixed with Friday the 13th. And they're like, well, now I want to do that. I was like, cool. Nice. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, do you really just like horror or do you like everything? I like uh, a little bit of everything. Like, uh, <clears throat> I. I not saying I specialize in it, but when like horror or action comedy are like the easiest things for me to write, like it comes, it, it flows the easiest. Like I don't get as much hangups when writing. <clears throat> I do love writing other genres though. Like I like writing sci-fi, like writing uh, uh, even like romance stuff. Romance is actually a, a tougher one for me because it, it's yeah. Horror and action comedy are easy, but romance, like I, I got to like, get myself to focus more when writing because sometimes whenever i'm writing like if i'm in the writing mood but i'm hung up on a script it's like uh, i'll go back over to this horror script because it's it's my like uh uh it's like my cheat essentially it's like ah like i didn't get anything of this romance script or whatever it's like i'll do this horror script um i've been trying to to mitigate that more and more to where I don't do that as much jump over to the genres I'm more comfortable with or whatever I try to stick to the ones that I I'm trying to work on and the different scripts with those yeah I was well I kind of took a break from writing that but I have like a novel but it's like a novel based within my superhero universe so yeah yeah like weird um and uh i was writing that and then like i just hit like a wall of like oh, i don't really want to do this right now so then i just went back to write my comics <laughs> and i was like I, for some reason this is just easier for me than writing a yeah. novel yeah but i can write pages and pages of a comic but when i'm writing a novel i'm like just no it's like different for me so i didn't say that like like I, I I haven't tried writing a novel. Like I, I write screenplays and comic scripts and stuff, but like I'm just a, trying to imagine myself like hopping into a novel right now and I could already see me like I, I get maybe an hour in and then I instantly go back to the comfort stuff of like, yeah. okay, horror comic or, or this comic or whatever. So I could see that. Yeah. There was so I was writing this one novel and then like I stopped like I, I, it's just on hold for a while because it was like actually boring me because <laughs> it was like nonfiction and it was like it was fiction nonfiction so it's like the f the future of like what our company would be in the future so oh, that God. sounds weird so I like I was like oh well this is I don't, I don't feel like writing this right now so then I came up with the idea of writing the novel within my superhero universe it's not just like it's not superheroes it's just the mafia stuff and yeah, it's yeah. based like it's like a prequel thing before all my stuff happens in my comics so it's just a journalist is creating a story after like an interview with this like big mob boss so that's literally what it is that's cool mm -hmm. so so is the the novel itself is it the the journalist story like it's the journalist writing it or yep. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So I was like, I'll just do it that way because that way I can like focus on actually writing it because it's not boring to me. <laughs> so nice. Um, so how do you go about like developing rich, complex characters like in storytelling? Uh, it, it really depends. Like first, when it comes to like ideas of of stories or whatever, like. <clears throat> you as well as other writers probably know this like over half the time when an idea of a story or whatever happens it's random time like you you it's hard to like force an idea to happen it's just like you're in the shower you're at the gym walking or whatever it may be it's just yeah. like random time it'll pop up you, you're driving it randomly yep. pops up um but yeah, actually like sitting down and writing that story when it comes to like the characters and stuff, they kind of just like 
flow naturally in the script. Like, like I'll, I'll have an outline usually of whatever the story is or the script or whatever it may be. Um, and I, I might have an ending. Sometimes I don't have an ending, but I might have an ending, but it's like fairly loose um, to where like I'm writing for this character and like, like I'm along the ride. Cause, cause it's, it's very much like when any of us are making characters, like these are like real people to us. Like, like we're, we're not entirely putting our own morals and values on them. We're seeing them as separate to where we're along for the ride in terms of what we see them doing. And then by the end, it's like, Oh, like that's, that's what happened. So that happens with me a lot of times. It's just like the, the fun of writing uh, characters, whether it's through comedy or through a drama or, or horror, whatever it may be, just seeing like as a writer, just a, a natural flow and you yourself being kind of surprised as the characters are making decisions. Like, yes, you're, you're ultimately the one making that decision for them because you're writing, but you're seeing it in their view rather than your view and I, I don't know i'd say if that even answers the question that's that's how yeah, i yeah. yeah a lot of well not yeah well, i guess a lot of my characters come from like actual people that i know i either change your name i let like let them know like hey you're gonna be in my comic <laughs> they're like oh okay. uh like mittens is actually based off my girlfriend's like childhood cat she had so oh, he's nice. not an actual space pilot in real life, but you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had a uh, like, yeah. That that's 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 a good point. Is like a lot of times we have stuff that's like based off of something we've seen or a person we we've met or whatever. I'm trying to pull out a floppy to show an example. Like my friend, <clears throat> he's a uh, he was like a really good artist in high school. He does art here and there, but. Uh, a lot of times he'd do like weird, creepy drawings of some of his friends. Like, like it'd just be like, oh, here's this weird alien version of you or whatever, that sort of thing. And he did one of me. And I put it in the back of this book because it was, it inspired one of the stories in uh, Disney Avenue number two. Let's see if I can get that good. Let's see. Uh, my stupid screen. Cool. You can kind of see that where it's like, it's basically me. It's like a bluish, weird form of me uh, holding like this like old fetus looking thing. And like my, there's like a, a basically an umbilical cord attached to my nose that goes to it. And I've always liked that, that art because uh, it's just so weird. And it stuck with me whenever he had sent it to where, like, I wrote a story all around that one painting. Um, and, like, it eventually wound up being like that. Like, that's the the creature and stuff. But, like, yeah, like, that, that tiny little thing, like this piece of art my friend did for fun of just a weird thing of me, basically. I was like... 16 page comic story just based on that so it's it's interesting to see those uh those influences and inspirations that happen that's cool yeah that art looks sick too so thank you thank you yeah i'm a huge fan of junji ito uh he's he's a big horror mangaka and that story writing it was very much like my influences of junji ito and then the artist i found for that story gaetano uh, Matt Riglio, he's able to ver do very much like a Junji Ito art style. So, yeah, I, I love that story. That page itself is like one of my favorite pages. It's whenever I'm at a con and someone's looking at the book, I have to flip to that one page and be like, hey, here's weird creature stuff. <laughs> Try to entice them with weirdness. So last question. Um, like what do you hope um, your comics like do as like an impact on like, you know, society? Uh, I'd say with uh, specifically talking with like 
uh, Gallows Man and Tells from Town City. And I, I might get to Disney after in a second, but those two, Gallows Man and Tells from Town City. I love comics nowadays. Like, like comics, I think, are, are some of the best they ever have been. Uh, there's a lot of, like, great, deep philosophical storytelling out there. There's stuff like Tom King stuff sometimes where by the end of it, I'm nearly on the verge of tears or whatever it may be it, it moves you like but i i say all that sometimes you need like just a little break from the seriousness or or the the deepness or the philosophicalness or whatever it is of a comic like sometimes you just need a fun funny time now in terms of like turn off your brain like a fast in the furious movie but just like a, a fun, funny time. And that's what I like to do with like Gallows Man and Tales from Town City is it's just like you you just got done reading one of your deep philosophical comics. Here's a little like intermission, basically. Like read this, like cleanse your palate a little bit before you get back into the trenches of just sorrow. Um, that's that's what I like to do with Gallows Man and Tells from Town Cities. It's, it's just a, a fun time. Yes, there are like like uh, uh, deeper meanings within those comics, but you don't have to like notice those or recognize those to enjoy the comic. It can just be a fun time. Um, but yeah, like like that's what I like to do with those. Just harken back to, hey, we can have fun comics sometimes. Just a fun read or funny read. Um, and Disney Avenue, <clears throat> I very much like horror. Like I grew up on horror and I really like to uh, uh, the Twilight Zone, like Rod Serling's The Twilight Zone. Like I grew up on that. I absolutely love it. Um, and Disney Avenue combines some of my love for modern horror, but also harkening back to that time of horror with like Twilight Zone. Um, and really just in my eyes having like a, a not a new perspective on horror because it is taking elements that are already there but just like hey like here's something that appears different but you have seen this before that's cool yeah um chronicles of horror has like a twilight zone kind of feel um and also i wrote a story for uh, so I was like part of this other anthology <clears throat> called, um, wow, what was it called? <laughs> uh, I just, oh, I just put it away. Now I have to find it. I, I can't even think of the title and I just, I just posted the picture like yesterday. Like, Hey, I forgot that I like didn't post it. Um, uh, it's got droid in it too. And I, and now I'm just stupid because I'm like, I was part of this thing. I don't, ah, punk droid. All right. Oh, so. Okay okay yeah so it's an anthology and like i was when i was marketing it when the kickstarter was going on the guy that was like in charge of it is like it's not just that and i was like oh, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but i was like oh it's like twilight zone or black mirror but like that's my story my story's like that yeah, so yeah. it was a lot of like black mirror because i just watched like the recent season before i wrote that yeah and, yeah and, um so a lot of people are like complaining about the ai art and stuff so I basically took that and I just made it into a story. Um, so there's a, it's a starving artist. Uh, he never finishes a painting. And then uh, this random person comes up to him and gives him a uh, like business card and just has like an art gallery thing on it and like address. Uh, he tells him if he actually finishes the painting, like he can put it in the gallery and all this stuff. He's like, oh, cool. So I'll actually finish it. And then he tells his girlfriend, and they have a little fight. His girlfriend actually doesn't believe in him that much. She's kind of like a business, like, snobby person, and he's yeah, yeah. the opposite. So in spite of, like, that fight, he, like, finishes the painting and then, like, goes to deliver it to the museum. Um, and when he walks in, it's, like, a just a dark room of, like, TV monitors. There's no actual art on the wall. It's just empty emptiness. And yeah. then there's a light, he goes down to the hall, and then he sees the person that gave him the business card. It's this, this dude that owns the um, gallery. And uh, he basically 
kidnaps the artist and like uses his brain for AI art and just generates it uh, and okay. puts it on the monitors and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I took the AI thing and I spun it to a story. I yeah, like, we're. Oh, I mean, yeah. we're we're literally going that direction. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so he's like put into a think tank and then like his brain is just, just being stolen for other stuff. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. But the rest of the anthology is not like that. It's different, but yeah. I like Twilight Zone, so. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I go back to it at least once a year. Not watch the whole thing, but watch at least a few yeah. episodes every year. Uh, Especially around this time, October, I'll probably <laughs> watch some. Yeah, I'm watching a lot of horror movies. Um, my last job, I was able to just do that at work because I was a security guard, so I didn't uh, have to do anything. Um, cool. So, those that are watching the podcast, uh, you know, when this actually comes out, this comes out on Wednesdays of the week that I record it normally depending on how it falls. So this will be out this coming Wednesday. Um, Brandon has a Kickstarter going on. It's going to end pretty soon. So let's see here. So there's three days left. Um, and I'm guessing, when did you like, let's end, 1 p.m. on uh, the 5th. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's yeah. good. So I, my Hopefully the podcast does something. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I will present it. So, what's your little elevator pitch for people to back your Kickstarter? So, Tales from Town City. It's golden age superhero dark comedy. Um, I, I want to first preface it's a spin-off of the gallows man but you don't have to read the gallows man to read this <clears throat> i do want to mention tonally just so you understand the tone of this that the gallows man is basically 1940s adam west batman meets inglorious bastards like that's the gallows man it's said in the 1940s he's beating up and killing nazis all while having that fun jovialness of adam west batman like oh like we got him, chum, or like G. Willikers, gallows man, like stuff like that, all while killing Nazis uh, violently. So I mentioned that Tales from Town City is a spinoff of the Gallows Man. It follows like minor characters within the Gallows Man. Uh, there's three different stories in issue one of Tales from Town City. One follows two homeless villains that use that are trying to use expired coupons uh, at a convenience store. I'm currently dressed as one of them. Uh, my green shirt, I usually have a green shirt. It's dirty. It's in the dirty laundry, though. Uh, but uh, so that's one of the stories. Another story follows a mortician who is trying to make sense of dead villains' names. Um, he's cremating these villains. He's like, okay, you're, you're dressed as the frog. Your name's the frog. That makes sense. But then he gets over to other villains. It's like, yours, I, I don't get it at all. You're called the jackal you don't resemble a jackal at all like you're dressed in a green mobster suit call yourself the green gangster it's not a good name it's better than the jackal so he's just talking to himself and these dead villains all while he's cremating their bodies and then the last story is called fierce pets and pets is an acronym it stands for precise ecosystemic tactical squad uh kind of harkening back to those wildcats days the covert action teams and this team of super animals go and slaughter poachers, like very viciously. Uh, and, and the next page kind of shows that uh, it, it, it gets pretty wild. But so a lot of variety in terms of your golden age uh, uh, dark comedy. But yeah, I, I, I enjoyed a good bit. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And there's also t-shirts we got the fierce pets t-shirts even has the acronym below it the precise ecosystemic tactical squad i've said that so many times it's just ingrained in my head like that acronym um but yeah it's, it's available in two colors i i ultimately did the t-shirt because i want a couple of them i'm, oh, I'm happy other people have been ordering them but it's like but, uh, a lot of things i'm like oh well i'm gonna make yeah. this thing just because i want it exactly exactly 
And yeah, there's a, there's reward tiers that range from $1 to $75, like pretty much a reward tier for any budget. Every little bit helps. Like you can get uh, Tales from Town City number one digitally for just five bucks. Uh, for 12 bucks, you get Tales from Town City number one, Galsman number one, Galsman number two digitally. That's over 130 pages of comics, all for 12 bucks. Physical copies for Tales from Town City start at 10 bucks. And then there's the t shirts. And then there's like bundles where it's like physical copies of Galsman one, Galsman two, Tales from Town City number one, signed as well as like stickers and PDFs of scripts and all that stuff. There's all kinds of little bundles and stuff with it. That's cool. Cool. Yeah. And then I have a preview of the Gallows Man for people that, uh, they want to get tells from town city but they're also like hey like what's the gallows man about basically and there's a seven page preview for that on the kickstarter as well of uh one of my dumbest parts in issue two of the gallows man but i i really do like it it uh basically follows gallows man he's he's infiltrating some nazi stuff that he heard about he's infiltrating it and comes upon these two henchmen who are just talking about a, a game they saw and then gal's man kills them he uses a thing called the noose reel uh, it jams though the guy's supposed to be flying up in the air it jams other henchmen are coming around the corner he's kind of panicking he straps ties some of the ropes to him throws the ropes up into the shipping container and then the next few pages are Gallows Man weekend at Bernie's, like puppeteering <laughs> this guy uh, in front of the henchmen, and them just like, oh yeah, yeah, like this, yeah, Otis. There's nothing wrong with Otis. All while like his neck is like visibly cracking and all this stuff. <laughs> like it's a a, a awesome. fun dumb time. <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. Printed by Comics Ball Spring. Yeah, it's it's the currently at least like I'm not like like bowing before Comics Ball Spring, but currently it's the the best quality for the price you pay from from all the stuff I've seen. Yeah, um, we I just got mittens two in from the campaign that we did. Yeah, in yeah. July and August and. It did take them a little longer. <laughs> than... Yeah, no, I I had that issue with uh, Disney Avenue 1 and 2. But part of that, which I mean, like, it is ultimately their fault. But I did uh, order it around Black Friday of last year because that's around the time my campaign ended. And there must have just been an influx of people that did orders around that time because they had a 25% off oh, discount. Oh. Um yeah, I didn't get those till like, I don't know, it was at least two months. And then whenever I got them, there was issues, so I had to send them back. But they sent they sent uh, the fixed ones back pretty quickly uh, to where there's no issues and I didn't have to pay extra or anything. Yeah, That's the only time I've had an issue with them, though. This is the first time that I've, like, an issue. It, like, showed up. But like, so I saw issue one of Mittens on top of everything. And I was like, I swear, you just printed issue one. <laughs> so I was like going through them. I was like, oh, okay, good. Issue two is in there. And like, oh, okay. That's I was good. like, why did you do that? But like, we ordered it September 5th and I just got them like two days ago. And they're like, yeah, we're like 14 oh, wow. days out. I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing that's a little bit frustrating is it does say like, I was like, 14 I day 14 delivery. Day. That's like, yeah, that's yeah. the like slowest yeah, yeah. thing. 14 days or less, and it yeah. was more than that. So, <sighs> but besides that, they're really cool. <laughs> but, yeah, I think they're just like, they have to catch up after like all of these comics are like just flowing. And I also think like, uh, they're they're booming a lot quicker than they're able to expand because they need to expand it's obvious they need to expand because everyone's going to them the past like two years 
Yeah. Um, and I, I'm sure they are expanding, but like they're trying to catch up with. Yeah, they just hired a social media person like last year, I think. Oh, okay. or, or maybe like in April. It, yeah. So, like, I was going to apply for that, but then I would have to go to like Michigan. Yeah, I'm like, I wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> I would want to just travel there all the time. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. So they're they're cool, and they actually sponsored our virtual Comic Con last year. Um, nice. So that was really cool. But I actually just remembered they have that cover contest going on like yeah. today or tomorrow. I I gotta enter that. I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, I never put a cover in. Usually, I don't have a comic that's like relevant to a contest, or it's just like I'm busy doing something else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So uh, where can people find you? Yeah, so people can find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok at Disney Comics. That's D-I-S-M-A-Y Comics. Um, you can follow along in terms of uh, Tales from Town City with the Kickstarter, as well as other comics that we have going on, like Gallows Man, Disney Avenue, and future projects, um, as well as just see me talk about comics or movies or just do dumb little ads as, as hypno Ray, basically. It's cool. Yeah. I have to do more TikTok stuff. I was going to earlier this year and then I just didn't have time to do that. So it, it takes a lot. The plus side is I, I do like doing TikTok because it's that like, like making a, a regular social media post on like Facebook or Instagram, like it's just like for me, it's just like ah, here's a post. Whereas like TikTok, like I'm making a video or whatever where like it hits that creative side of me a little bit to where like, oh, I might not be writing a comic right now, but at least I'm doing something creative. I feel like I'm creating something kind of. Yeah. I just post our podcast episodes on there really and like little other clips of something like i don't yeah yeah because i never know what to like just say on there so i'm just like <sighs> cool so uh thanks for coming on and thank you uh yeah this will be out wednesday so Sounds hopefully good. this gets you a backer or something so <laughs> yeah thank you man